Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and this is part three of our fish room tour. The first two parts, if you've missed them, will be down in the description below. Today, we're gonna be looking at the 125s and the 75s on this side, as well as some smaller 20 gallon tanks. I think you're going to enjoy it. If you want more information on some of the fish featured in this video, check out the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. So this is part three of our fish room tour. This is the last part on this side of the fish room. In the next video, we'll head over to the other side. We're gonna look at some of the larger tanks on this side of the fish room, a couple 75s, these two 125s, and we've got three 20 gallon tanks that we're gonna look down uh, on this side. And then we've also got a 10 gallon that we can't see, but this is really cool stuff. These are some of the largest fish that we have in the fish room that you're gonna be seeing in this video a little later right now. We are looking at the 75 gallon Imbuna tank. This is one of my favorite tanks to look at. There's always a lot of action going on. We've done a pretty good job of managing aggression. Sometimes you'll hear that these fish are somewhat aggressive and that can be true, but when we mix them the right way, they tend to do pretty well. There are some fish here that aren't quite Imbunas. We've got a Tritocephalus in here, which is a Lake Tanganyikan fish, that little guy. Uh, they can be pretty aggressive, so it's fitting in pretty well in this tank. You'll also see a Dragon Blood, you'll see an OB. I've found the OB peacocks to be fairly aggressive and they actually do better in an Imbuna tank compared to a peacock tank, so that's fitting in well. By the way, if you want more information on a lot of the fish that we feature in this video, definitely check out the description below. We'll have a lot of species profiles down there for you. That is actually a species 35 that we've done a species profile on before, and they can be much, much, much darker when they're on the in the right setting with a darker substrate. That's a Pseudotrophus ACI. This is an Elon Goddess. Lots of cool fish. This is the 75 directly below it. Sorry, the glass is a little bit scratched up on this tank. Don't know quite what happened there, but what we've got going on here is kind of a mess, to be honest. And this is a tank that I think we're going to clear out. This is probably where the star sapphires are going to end up. And we're going to go ahead and probably move some of these fish out. This is kind of a mixed colony breeding tank. You see some OBs. There are some red empress in here. The females, all the silver or brown fish that you see, many of them are female red empress. Some of them are in Benji's. We've got some Eureka red females in here as well. You can see Ruby is in here as well. She is our female Midas cichlid. She had a lot of fry. And after that, we lost the male and we put her in this tank, hoping that it would work out. And so far over the last, I'm not quite sure, maybe four to six months, it's worked out really well. She's not a particularly aggressive female Midas and these fish kind of have their own pecking order already. So that, that particular setup, this has worked out pretty good. Almost all the females, and here's one of them, almost all the females in this tank are holding. This is a tank that produces a lot of our OBs. So when we're selling our OBs, when you see them around the fish room, these are the combinations that produce those mostly male red empress and dragon bloods. And we've just got a lot of really cool combos going there. This is our 125. The electric blue car used to be in a 40 gallon. I, in the last video, I showed you a pair that had fry. We moved the rest into this 125. This tank in particular has been kind of a nightmare in the past. We had a disease outbreak with some other fish. We've since cleared that up. And now the electric blue cars have been in here for a while. They're doing well. The other inhabitants in this tank, we've got some really, really, really old peacock gudgeons that are in here that are kind of on their in their last days. We've got some goodyids here, Iliadon white eye. There's a bristlemose pleco in here. This is where the denison barbs, the roseline sharks, are going to go that I showed you from the first video. I think they're going to look awesome in here with the electric blue car. Neither one of them are particularly aggressive, so I think it's going to be a good combo. The other thing that we've got in this tank is a couple dwarf frogs, which are fitting in pretty well. And then these guys, these are the Spanish rib newts. We have two of them. They're really goofy. I like them quite a bit. And again, they're fitting in well in this particular setup. Now, this is the 125 right below. This is the Oscar tank, there's Chaz. You see the big 
Niall Tilapia on the right hand side, that's Timmy. That's pretty much their tank. This tank has kind of devolved into some kind of a crazy mix of community fish where we're mixing different cichlids from different continents. I know for some of you that is, it's just hard to look at. Uh, we're probably going to straighten some things out in this tank in the not too distant future. You're actually going to see some of Ruby's offspring here, some of the Midas cichlids. These, by the time you actually watch this, these would probably have all moved out to auction. There's about 20 of them in here that are somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple inches. So those are all going to go. I think what we're going to wind up doing with this tank is obviously Chaz, and we're looking at Timmy here, the big Nile tilapi. He's about 18 inches long. Chaz is somewhere in that 12 to 13 inches, the Oscar. I want these two to stay in here for now. All of the Red Devil or the uh, Midas Cichlid Fry are going to move out. I think we're going to move out all of the Red Empress males that you see. There's two or three of them in here. And then possibly keep the OBs, a uh, couple OB males, a couple OB females, lighten the load up in this tank a little bit, uh, provide more space for the inhabitants. And I think that's pretty much what we're going to do. This tank needs some reconstruction. I think I'm going to have Joanna go ahead and rescape this tank at some point. This is a tank that's really, really, really difficult to keep in top order just because you got all these fish love to dig. I see them ripping out the the branches from the fake plants. They knock sponge filters apart. They'll knock the intakes off of the hang on back filters. It's just what they do. They're big fish. They're active fish at times. So sometimes when you have cichlids, you just kind of have to accept the fact that sometimes your tank isn't going to look its best all the time. And that's certainly the case with this one. I've shown you this fish recently. This is Therops irregularis. We have two of them, one here, one in a tote on the other side of the fish room. This is just in quarantine right now. I think this fish, it may move into the Oscar tank once we clear that out a bit, or it could possibly wind up in a 75 gallon on the other side of the fish room. Either way, I love this fish. It's got fantastic color. They're very interesting in terms of their personality. I'm hoping the other one that we've got is a female that's in the tote. And they're both just, like I said, they're going through quarantine. They're gonna make their way into a larger tank in the not too distant future. This is a 20 gallon, a 20 gallon high. Uh, I love this tank because the back is a rock wall that I created out of styrofoam and cement. So it was one of the earliest projects I did in that kind of, in that nature. And the substrate in this one is fluorite. And for whatever reason, the crypts go absolutely crazy with this fluorite in here. They love it. And we get a lot of growth from our plants. It's kind of a community tank. We've got some guppies. We've got some white clouds. A lot of older fish are in this tank, but it's just pretty cool to look at. This is a 20 gallon actually below the low boy. And what we've got in here right now are just three Neil Amprologus signatus. They are shell dwellers. Not really happy with the colony that we got. We started out with 10 and they just, they weren't very, uh, they weren't very healthy. So we're down to three. We've got more mystery snails in here uh, than we do signatus, but I was hoping we'd be able to breed these fish. There's a male right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, share, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you in part four.